Well, as Alistair uh, mentioned, uh, I'm with Teradata, and I'm going to talk a little bit about big data analytics and simplifying, but probably more important, deploying it to the business users. At Teradata, big data has been all around the analytics and addressing analytics to solve business problems. Uh, we acquired a company called Astrodata in uh, the April timeframe, and Astrodata is bringing MapReduce analytics to the business through a unique SQL MapReduce framework that I'll kind of expose you to and uh, kind of give you an idea of, again, not only simplifying it for the business, but really talking about how to deploy it to the business. The first thing that I ask when I go out to commercial customers, they all want big data. Well, what do you want? What's the definition of big data? So as Alistair uh, talked about, big data is about large volumes. Well, we've set the stage in large volumes in the data warehousing space for the last 20, 25 years. Now, it might have been at a terabyte 20 years ago, and we just delivered a 37 uh, petabyte uh, uh, system just in the last month. So you can see the range of analytics from a SQL perspective. So the MP MPP technology does allow automatic scale out, the management of the data, et cetera. Uh, we happen to have a platform, a family that scales anywhere from you know, two terabytes up to 50 petabytes of uh, you know, analytics. And you can see we have over 16, and it's growing, petabyte customers. And you can see some of the logos there that are applying this data to business problems. Now, these are running the business. These are, you know, 50, uh, 100 applications with thousands of users going against this data. But it's going beyond what we're doing in the data warehousing space. So in the big data, do you mean the new data types, the new kind of semi-structured data that's out there that doesn't fit well in a SQL world? It is a little bit harder to analyze. And again, is this your definition of big data? Because this is part of the new frontier of being able to analyze those location codes, understanding who is where and is their association with them. Two people land in New York at the same time, do they know each other? I don't know, but if you take a look at a time series of different touch points of individuals and you now can recognize the two individuals are in the same location five times over a 10-day period, more than likely there's an association. So taking a look at these new data types. Uh, Gartner talks about you know, the four quadrants of volume. And volume's important, but volume can be handled by a parallel environment. And then you talk about velocity and uh, uh, variety of the data. And you know, we talk about uh, the complexity. And that's really where we start to get into kind of the new analytics and the complexity around the new analytics. So a lot of times what people talk about in big data as being kind of the new frontier is really around these new analytical frameworks beyond SQL. We kind of say non-SQL because we don't believe in no SQL necessarily, but not always SQL. And so this is where we get into the map reduce frameworks and some of the advantages uh, that we have in this space. And just a couple of examples, again, applying data and analytics to business problems. Uh, we have two examples here around the map reduce analytics that uh, you know, we work on and we're solving business problems. And one is around pattern matching. And the nice thing about map reduce is that it's a lot easier to deploy and it's more efficient in taking the look at the data in all one single swoop. Versus in a SQL environment, I will not say it can't be done, because anytime we challenge our SQL application developers to do something, they do it. But we've got a couple around the world that can do some of the things that can be done easily and more efficiently in MapReduce. So a lot of the time series analysis, a lot of the graph analysis on the nodal, as I said, we have a person in Australia that has basically done graph analysis on Teradid via SQL for 20 million customers. Now, we know through our internal analysis with Astro data and the acquisition, it's much more efficient to be done in MapReduce. So what we're doing is trying to bring MapReduce to the business and deploy to the enterprise. One of the biggest challenges of any analytics, people talk about the scalability of the data. That's the easy thing. The scalability of the analytics to the business user is the biggest challenge that you're going to face. 
You can develop the coolest analytic, the greatest insight. If nobody else in the business understands what you're doing, you won't get the business value out of it. So we see this kind of, you know, uh, map reduce environment and a lot of the Hadoop environment and, and uh, some of the leading edge companies that have very engineering focus and, and web analytics. But quite frankly, when you get out into the Fortune 1000, now you run into the issues around the enterprise class expectation. Deployment through the BI environment. You know, the reality is SQL is the language of business. And so we've taken an approach with MapReduce to deploy through a SQL framework. So what we've done here is we develop a platform that basically is a massively parallel data storage layer that can store both relational, non-relational data, row, column, whatever is the most efficient that we see in the modeling. And then we have a SQL engine that can execute MapReduce within a SQL MapReduce framework. And I'll give you an example in a little bit here. And then on top, we build pre-built map reduce analytics that can be deployed in this SQL environment. So one of the things that we're announcing today is a digital media optimization attribution map reduce algorithms that help you define not just a customer made a purchase and where they came from, but we're able to find out where they've been. Because if they purchased after your email campaign, should you spend all your money on email? Well, if you can take a look at where they've been, you found out that you got them on a paid search. You got them when they went to their website. You got them when they signed up for your newsletter. And you got them in the Facebook social analysis. They just happened to execute after the email. So do not, in your ad optimization, forget about paid search. Because if you hadn't had paid search, you probably wouldn't have gotten into the email and the purchase. So we're building these pre-packaged analytics in a MapReduce framework that can be deployed by the business users through SQL. So this is just a quick example of one of the MapReduce functions that we built around NPath, uh, determine the product user, and what is the path from ad to actual purchase. And the nice thing about this is the way it's executed is in a SQL framework, select, product, time, et cetera, and then the end path is our map reduce function that is now executed in this SQL framework where time is over 30 days. You want to do it over 60 days? Change the where clause. So again, this is a unique way to deploy map reduce. One of our customers has basically said the challenge in the beauty is finding the data scientists but finding a number of them and anybody else in the organization to employ what they've done is a challenge. So we have three great map reduce data scientists that build nice things that now 150 BI users through a BI tool or SQL can now execute to address business problems. Because I don't care that my business user knows what that fraud algorithm is in that map reduce. They just need to understand how to apply that in a business context against the data they already know. So that's what we're doing here. Here's an example in the healthcare business, trying to find out, again, patterns and paths of healthcare service so that when customers or you know, patients go to the doctors and they get uh, you know, healthcare on a particular uh, you know, problem that they're having, you know, Medicare basically says that they go back with the same problem and you have to care for them again within 30 days, you don't get payment. So what are the things, looking at all the patients, all of the people that have been uh, gone to the doctor, which are the ones that are you know, being serviced such that they don't go back? And it's finding those patterns. Here's some of the other examples of uh, customers that we are working with and the different types of uh, analytics in this space. So again, it's unique. We have a session later today that you can take a look at, hopefully. Uh, and again, big data is about finding the right analytics and applying the right technology. It may be that SQL is the best way to approach many of the big data analytics. But in the data discovery, it may be more of a map reduce. In a Teradata, we basically have with both our Teradata database and Aster data, kind of this addressing the A to Z analytics. So again, extracting data value from 
structured existing data with the new data that we're now collecting. It is now delivering kind of these new analytics around MapReduce, but most importantly, it's deploying these analytics in an easily deployed SQL MapReduce framework that we're bringing to the market and trying to drive to, again, not only simplify, but really deploy analytics to the enterprise. So hopefully you'll stay, uh, stop by the uh, presentation at 1130 and our booth, and we appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you.